Having a great banquet is a very different thing from snacking on tapas. Some animals like to eat big, consuming large quantities in a short time, which leaves them full up for a while. Many others prefer to eat little and often, ingesting several servings of food every day to stave off hunger. Going out for tapas is a Spanish custom which has become popular around the world. It's something that animals have always done. A small appetizer or snack, little portions of hot or cold food, tasty mouthfuls that momentarily appease the hunger pangs. In the world of animal gourmets, a little mouse, shrew or grasshopper is often considered exquisite tapas and a useful part of the daily food ration essential for survival. Animals such as rodents, insects and small fish are very much sought after every day in the great restaurant called Planet Earth. During the day, at night or at sunset, Winged hunters and mammals lick their lips just thinking of crunchy grasshoppers or delicious mice. These are the appetizers, the tapas, that the most refined bills and mandibles of the animal world are in search of. Tapas can turn up when you least expect it, so animals that enjoy eating little portions of food are always alert, the five senses wide awake. This small gray fox that lives in the south of South America, in the Andes region, pays constant attention to what is happening around him. It's a small canid weighing barely four kilos that loves to nibble at whatever it encounters when patrolling its territory. The trophic ecology of the gray fox has been studied in some depth by biologists, and they have come to the conclusion that it is more omnivorous than carnivorous, with a diverse diet that includes rodents, Patagonian hares, many invertebrates, assorted fruits and carrion. It seems that nothing is beyond its culinary tastes. It usually finds small portions of food, snacks and light meals to fill a hole, and that has ended up becoming its habitual way of eating. Insects and small mammals hidden under stones are the most common snack in mountainous areas. The fox's young hide in the sparse bushes and await the arrival of their mother. Long walks allow her to collect enough food to provide milk for her cubs.
and they can now enjoy their dairy appetizer, the most complete food, their mother's milk. The mother fox stops suckling when she considers it's time for her cubs to try new foods. Sometimes she has to be firm with the gluttonous cubs who demand more milk. Educating her little ones is a serious business and she must stand her ground. Far away, in an Iberian forest, another little hunter is taking a stroll. He's hungry and fancies a hot and tasty snack. The beech marten is a skilled hunter with a virtually omnivorous diet. It enjoys snacking here and there, eating as much fruit as insects and small mammals. Noisy sparrows are not excluded, but are difficult to catch. And snakes are a dangerous prey, so it's better to go for the traditional. The Martin's diet is characteristic in its marked taste for small mammals during good weather and fruit when fall arrives. Now it's summer, so it's looking for an appetizing wood mouse. While the marten is out searching for tapas, no small animal is safe. Having tapas means visiting several locations to taste the local specialities, kebabs or other snacks. So the marten visits many different places. It moves quickly and with great agility across its wide hunting territory. And today, it really fancies a mouse. But they're not easy to find. But finally, after an intense hunt, the marten will get its coveted tapas. Going out for tapas combines two activities, eating and hanging out with friends. In other words, it's a social custom. So perhaps that's why this wild cat, before heading out for aperitifs, has decided to make sure its coat is clean and shiny. But this cat, like all small predators, prefers to go out alone. It has no intention of sharing its snacks with anyone else, 
Eating tapas is a personal matter, and if a crowd is in on the hunt, the prey would be scared away. The wildcat comes across some really tasty dishes. Forest birds, such as blackbirds, are delicious, but they are quick and easily scared off. Like all cats, the mountain cat is very agile. Its territory includes the branches of trees and shrubs, thickets and wooded areas where other hunters prefer not to explore. Wildcats are usually specialists when it comes to eating. Their taste for rodents is such that in some areas, these small mammals make up more than 95% of the cat's daily diet. And that's just the kind of meaty morsel this cat is looking for through the maze of vegetation. Occasionally, they catch birds, shrews, or insects, but what they really like best, the dish that really gets their juices flowing, is mice and voles. In Spain, they also take advantage of rabbits where they are common. And it gets its first snack of the day. This cat appears not to want to try more exotic tapas. The cat finally comes across a less than alert rodent and gets its first snack of the day. This cat appears not to want to try more exotic tapas. It loves to repeat the same appetizer again and again. The wild cat does not like change, but eating tapas is all about varying the menu and trying different tasty things. Olives, potato chips, croquettes, omelets, sausages, and so on. And in the case of these kestrels, grasshopper. The lesser kestrel is a small falcon that hunts a variety of prey but it's insects, especially grasshoppers and locusts, which are its preference for lunch. Kestrels hunt by sight hovering in the air in 68% of cases, but with a low success rate of only 30%. In addition to their taste for grasshopper, they go for beetles, voles, shrews, and caterpillars of butterflies. These are what they take back to their nests. Their chicks wait in the nest, found in the recesses of walls or the roofs of townhouses, their usual habitations. Following the harvesters is a profitable business. There, there's enough tapas for all the pairs of the colony. The big machines scare their prey, and the kestrels simply have to drop from the air to catch them one by one. Among the appetizers hunted in this way are small mammals, like this shrew, which the little kestrel can barely swallow. As they grow, the parents bring the chicks larger prey. The lesser kestrel is able to provide a variety of tapas for its young, mostly insects, which make up almost 95% of their diet.
Raising their chicks requires great effort since most of what they catch weighs no more than a gram. So going out for tapas, for the parents at least, is hard, unceasing work. Wolves also go out for a bite. These hunters fall into the category of super predators, able to bring down deer, bison and elk. But they also like tapas, and there's nothing they won't sink their teeth into. So it's better to disappear when he passes by. Wolves are very laid back and will eat whatever food source is most abundant and readily available. Their palate is content with a huge variety of foods, and they can even settle for garbage and carrion, or small animals when they are available. In the forest, everyone is alert to the wanderings of the wolf pack, tirelessly hunting through the undergrowth. Developed sense of smell tells them that there are some tasty appetizers around. A few small animals will not satisfy them, but it will be the first meal of the day. The tracks of scent lead them to sniff around the mole's tunnels. And while the whole pack is interested, one mole is not easy to share. A frightened mouse peeps out cautiously. Maybe he thinks he's too small for a large hunter that can weigh more than 60 kilos. But he is wrong. Sometimes when there are explosions in the vole and mouse populations, they become the main food source for small wolf packs. For the wolves, no prey is too small, and they never say no to a tasty snack. In Spain, tapas is an appetizer that is served in most bars along with a drink, and each place has its own speciality. The locals go from bar to bar trying different tapas. The diet of these genet is not highly elaborated like tapas, but it is just as diverse. Genets are carnivorous animals with such broad tastes that they almost pass for omnivores in many regions, where the supply of food is plentiful and varied. Although it can adapt to the variety of food offered by each ecosystem, what it really likes are small mammals such as mice, shrews and voles. These are its favorite snacks. Despite its taste for furry little snacks, 
Its diet can be defined as being one of opportunism and versatility. Genets will not turn down any snack it comes across. Crawfish, snakes, lizards, various fruits and even herbs. This cat-like mammal from the viverid family is extremely stealthy and agile. And like a cat, also has retractable claws and excellent night vision. These are its weapons for catching mice, its favorite tapas. Depending on where they live, genets have two different diets. One in which small mammals are the main dish, and another in which arthropods are more abundant than mice and shrews. Genets will consume most species of insects, and rodents such as wood mice, a fundamental component of its daily diet. It knows the places where it can find mice and is both patient and skillful in the hunt. Today, once again, its snack is an appetizing Western Mediterranean mouse. In Spain, tapas varies hugely depending on the gastronomic region where it's found. Aquatic and marine environments provide their own specific variants of tapas. Small fish, such as anchovies and whitebait, are part of this varied and tasty range of snacks. And of course, there are also typical diners in these aquatic environments. Some have a simply frightening aspect, such as the larvae of water beetles. Some have a simply terrifying aspect, such as the larvae of water beetles. Water beetle larvae are armed with huge sickle-shaped mandibles that they use like a psychopathic butcher might. They plunge them deep into the body of their victims and inject a mixture of toxic solvents that liquefies their prey's insides. The larva then simply absorbs the juices of its recent catch. In this case, it's snacking on a small gambusia. Though voracious, it can't quite manage all the fish it finds in the pond. But this one is not getting away. The parents of the larvae, the adult water beetles, also hunt in the water, but they usually settle for carrion that is drowned in the marshy pond. Adults may reach up to five centimeters and are excellent divers with streamlined bodies, though they must surface in order to breathe. But most of their lives is spent underwater looking for snacks like this fish. Appetizers are often small portions of food designed to excite the palate in a few mouthfuls. In the case of the water beetles, it's a veritable feast of tiny fish that measure no more than a few centimeters. <laughs> 